Hello, welcome to this series of videos. Now we have Marisol. Marisol, tell us a little bit about yourself and the project that you work on as an undergraduate student. Hello, my name is Marisol Valdez. I am a chemistry major and I will be finishing my bachelor's degree in June. I will begin my PhD program this coming fall in material science and engineering and I will be working with uh, nanoelectronics uh, for the materials. Uh, in my undergraduate, I worked on a project for sensing uh, food spoilage using nanofibers. Perfect. Uh, and you published a scientific article. Very good. Very, very proud of you. And what's your video about? Given that all our team uses the SCM instrument, I have produced a video to talk about it. Perfect. We're ready to see it. Hope you all enjoy it and learn a lot about the SCM. Bye, Madison. <laughs> Hi everyone, today we will be covering a very important instrument known as the SEM. SEM stands for Scanning Electron Microscope. An SEM is the type of microscope that utilizes a beam with a high energy electron that interacts with the surface of a sample to give various signals to define the surface with an image. You might ask, what is the difference between the SEM and the optical microscope? Firstly, the optical microscope is known as a light microscope. It uses visible light and lenses to magnify a surface to give a close-up image. The optical microscope also measures in micrometers, while the SEM uses electrons to give an image of the surface as well as measures from micrometers to nanometers. The SEM has many working parts, such as the electron gun, the electron column, the anode, magnetic lenses, deflector coils, a sample chamber, backscattering electron detector, a sample holder, and a secondary electron detector. Before using the SEM, the electron column must be in a vacuum system. This will then allow the electrons to travel while not being interrupted when approaching the sample. Once the column is in the vacuum system, we can now use the electron gun to shoot out the electrons through the column. Those electrons then travel through the first part of the chamber, it being the anode. The anode attracts the electrons to then give the electrons an orientation to travel as a beam. The beam then continues to travel along the column and goes to the magnetic lens. The magnetic lens creates a magnetic field and the magnetic field allows for the electrons to flow through as well as become a precise beam. As the electrons pass through the magnetic lens, it will continue to approach the deflector coils. The deflector coils provide a magnetic field, but a magnetic field that positions the electrons precisely to cover the surface of the sample. The deflectors essentially begin to shade the area of the sample with the electron beam. Moving on to the bottom half of the SEM, the SEM has a sample chamber and a sample holder. The sample holder is where the sample is placed to be analyzed. Now the sample chamber is where the detectors are held, such as the secondary electron detector and the backscattering electron detector. The secondary electron detector is for the secondary electrons that come out of the sample when being hit by an electron beam. Those electrons are then picked up by the detector, giving unique signals that are analyzed by the computer to give a surface image. The second detector is the backscattering electron detector. It is for the electrons that came from the electron gun and bounced straight back up after interacting with the sample. Once the electrons hit the detector, it will create a signal to help produce an image. Both the secondary and the backscattering electrons help produce a surface image. The SEM does have a third detector to help with the analysis of a sample. The third detector is an X-ray detector. The X-ray can analyze a sample and measure the elemental composition of the compound. The X-ray detector begins to work when the electron beam interacts with the sample, releasing a specific X-ray wavelength that is represented by a specific compound, helping identify the composition of the sample. As you can see, the SEM is a very powerful instrument that helps analyze the surface of a sample from a micro to a nanometer scale, as well as give data on the sample composition.